welcome to yet another episode of Martinis with Nick. Local playwright Nicholas Wardigo here in Philadelphia. Harvesting zucchini in my garden, which I am not going to feed, but will grill close to today's special guest, Bruce Graham. I hate zucchini. Bruce Graham is the author of 13 published full-length plays, including Berkey, Minor Demons, Coyote on a Fence, The Outgoing Tide, North of the Boulevard, and Stella and Lou. His film credits include Dunson Checks In, Anastasia, and Steal This Movie. Television credits include Roseanne, Cedar Cove, and The Good Witch. He's received grants from the Pew Foundation, the Princess Grace Foundation, the Rockefeller Foundation, and the Philadelphia Theater Institute. Uh, Initiative. Smooth. Yeah, smooth. yeah, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. He teaches film and theater courses at Drexel University and in recent years has returned to acting. And today, he's going to help me not eat zucchini. I hate it. I just don't see the point. <laughs> Before you get too much into it, mm -hmm. thanks for coming out here. Oh, my pleasure. Uh, my pleasure on this too. Yeah, so that's, that, that's a martini glass. You know, oh yeah, you can hold tap it down and you can kill a man with it. It's great. You know. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like you've never done that before. No. I never had a playwriting course until I already had two plays off Broadway. And, I was in grad school and I never went to it and I got a B. And I always respected Ernie Shear for giving me a B. Um, hmm. So I was kind of a professional by the time I took a course and I never went. Um, so I was self-taught and um, I would study plays I was in. You know, you do 10 weeks of Harvey and dinner theater. You sit backstage a lot and go, gee, why does this work? That's well built. Why does, you know, A leads to B leads to C. I read every play in the Ridley Library as a kid. And when I finished all them, I got on my bike, I went over to the Swarthmore Library and read all the plays there. Uh, I read some really crappy plays. Um, but I plowed through them, I was kind of obsessed about it. For the 2015-2016 season, your plays will, will uh, uh, run in three different major Philadelphia theaters. People's Light and Theater Company, Arden Theater Company, and Theater Exile. Can you name the specific demon to whom you sold your soul? You forgot Act Two is doing the Queen of Golden. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, and in the spring, uh, if Trenton counts, Passage Theater is doing White Guy in the Bus. Okay, now you're just showing. <laughs> yeah, <why not? laughs> I'm amazed I remembered. Um, no, it, well, last year they didn't do any, so they owed me. You know. <laughs> oh, is that how it is? Oh, that's how it is. You need yeah. to bring up your average. Oh no, <laughs> I didn't realize. It's in the it city like... charter. You didn't know this. I... Probably your highest profile gig was co-writing the cartoon version of Anastasia in 1997. How did you score that gig? I kept turning it down. <laughs> so it wasn't scoring it. No, it wasn't it was scoring it. It was. They just wore you down. You got yeah, I, I was doing Dunstan. I was under contract at 20th Century Fox. Yeah. And we were doing Dunstan checks in where I was kind of writing a day ahead of each scene. And I would come back to my hotel room. I was on the set all day. Dunstan checks in. The, uh, the Citizen Kane of Orangutan comes. Buy a copy today. I still get residuals. And I said, Look, I said, this is kind of a dumb idea. I said, first of all, she's dead. You know, it's a, it's a cartoon about a dead Russian kid. And I said, and no, <laughs> I said, no boy in his right mind is going to go see a movie called Anastasia. And he just looked at me and said, uh, we open in two years at the uh, Metropolitan Opera House. Here are, the, here are the drawings, here are the songs, we don't have a script. And so I was like, oh my god. Okay. <laughs> so I pulled, the, I pulled the PC card and said, you know, you really need a woman to write this story. I don't know what it's like to want to be a princess. You know, I might have been Martha Mitchell on my backboard, but I don't know she be a princess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I brought in a very talented writer, Susan Gautier, and then they said, well look, you're under contract. Go in the room, you know, Don Bluth, Lynn Aaron, Stephen Flaherty, the songwriter. I was going to ask, you, did you meet Don Bluth? Oh, God, yes. We were, we were all, we had such a gun to our head. I mean, the ink was still wet when they showed this, you know, at the premiere. I'm, just, I'm a big fan of animation, so that, mm -hmm. that to me is Oh, huge. he's the nicest man in the world. What an artist. He's not funny. 
unfortunately. Oh. I, I would write seven jokes for a scene and keep the three worst, unfortunately. But he's a sweet man. And, um, see, for some reason, you know, I see the secret in Nim, mm -hmm. and I, for some reason, I just think, man, that is so dark. He's got to be hysterical. Like, he's just very, he's one of those calm people I've ever oh, in my life. It's unsettling. <laughs> I have a seventeen-year-old cousin named Anastasia, right. who who is unfortunately a talented playwright. Mm -hmm. What's the scariest thing you can say to her to sway her from pursuing a writing career? I might just wave food at her and say, do you like this? You know? <laughs> um, my job as a teacher is sometimes to scare the hell out of these kids. Yes, should be. It should be. And then, if I can't scare you, you might be able to make it in the business. Mm -hmm. So, all I have to do is like quote statistics. You know, I mean, with, uh, acting statistics are, you know, what, 15% of, of equity made a living wage last year? Pardon me. And I was not one of them. Um, it's taken me 30, last year, my 32nd anniversary as a professional playwright, and it's the first year where I can sit back and go, you know, I could have lived off of being a playwright. Hmm. It took 32 years. You know, I've, and I've been lucky. You co-wrote a book with Michelle Volansky called The Collaborative Playwright. Yep. What was the motivation behind that? It was her idea. Um, she's one of the best dramaturgs in the country, and I had been teaching with um, young playwrights of Pennsylvania, or young players of Philadelphia had changed, and it, I saw teachers going in there who had no concrete lessons, hmm. and I'm a teacher. I mean, I, I was a school teacher for five years. I remember one woman, <laughs> she was, I have, I, so I designed exercises. So you can use this exercise, you can use this exercise, you know, so the kids get confident in what they're doing, and have a basic working knowledge. This woman goes, I prefer to tell the children. It's like, okay, you're dead right there calling them children. Okay. To write what they feel. I said, oh, you're going to get some good material. The next year, she was using my exercises. You got to eat a lot. Your reputation as a crotchety bastard is legendary. <laughs> have you ever completely shattered anyone's sense of self worth? <laughs> That's a, good, that's a great intro to the question. <laughs> when I was 22, my own mother called me the world's youngest curmudgeon. I once witnessed you out drink a bison. <laughs> to what do you credit Bobby your... Bison, yeah, I went to school with him. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bobby, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Used to watch my kids. <laughs> to what do you credit your inhuman drinking ability? <laughs> oh, this is good. I can't wait for the insurance people to see this. <laughs> <laughs> Good clean living. I mean, <laughs> All right. Uh, no, I, metabolism. You just have a high metabolism. I have a high metabolism and a thermostat. What does that mean? It means you know when to slow down. Oh. Yeah. I'm sure, thermostat's the right word. Mm -hmm. it's it's pressure more, cooker. <laughs> it's more like the um, it's more like the, the floater switch on your <laughs> sump. <something. laughs> That's good. That's good. All right. right. Yeah. Yeah. It just kind of comes up. I'm a plumber son. I should have known that. You know, yeah. It comes up. Yeah. No, I, I've cut down, dude. Jeez, I couldn't keep. You almost had to. Yeah, I'd be 400 pounds and yeah. uh, dead. So you know, so, no. I, many nights I just have my one cocktail before dinner, sure. and um, that's it. Um, I, I, I'm very vain, so it's put too much weight on. So I'm into heroin now. <laughs> <laughs> My agent called me one time and said, don't go into a producer's office and make fun of the posters on his wall. Because <laughs> I remember this idiot giving me notes, I'm in LA, and I stood up and I walked across the room, and I forget what the movie was. I, I, don't, I, I do remember, it was Cool as Ice, Vanilla Ices, what an annoying movie. I didn't even know about this. It was the fastest movie ever to go from theater to video at the time. All right. Yeah. And I walked over and I pointed at the poster and I said, your name is on that, and you're going to give me notes about my scripts? <laughs> Obviously, I did not sell that film. Why does most theaters suck? <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because nobody knows structure. Playwrights do not know structure. It's, here's, you know, what I, it's like that woman that I had to 
you know, take the school for teaching. You know, I'm writing about what I feel. Well, that's great. Well, I don't feel that. Tell me a story. You know, give me a plot. Joe can use on that fight for all the time. Like with the uh, red light winner or something. What do you think? I went, no second act. <laughs> you know, um, there's no second act. The second act is just the same as the first act, only we're yelling. You know, nothing new happened. A lot of times I don't give a rat's ass about the characters, the aliens. Um, she's the hot player at the moment. Um, I like the production. Uh, I've read it. Yeah, and I thought... That's what happens like behind a... Yeah, but yeah, and I wasn't bored or anything, but at the end of the day I went, I really don't give a crap about these people. You know, they all died, you know. I like plays where I leave the theater and I, I think, what happened to these people the next day? I got pictures from Centralia in the 70s when we were going up to, to jump in the quarry and go swimming. And it was warm. The water was warm. Oh, but it was. But they had the, the, the steam vents coming out and there's my oh wife my and my buddy's oh, wife. Not dead. <laughs> you know, I'm really well insured. My wife and daughter ask that a lot. Oh my God. not dead yet. <laughs> they can go buy their vineyard. Michael Hollinger. Local playwright. Um, there was a theater, Florida Stage. Mm -hmm. They did they did like a six play season, and three of them were Philadelphia playwrights. I remember that. Okay, like, right. Five years ago. Yeah, something like that. And um, Gibbons III. Gibbons III. Mm -hmm. So I go down, and I'm talking to like some literary interns or whatever, you know. I'm talking to the kids, and I said, "Wow, we uh, do you know Michael Hollinger? He was here in like October, <laughs> whatever." And I went, "Oh yeah, my was a good friend of mine." And I said, they came down, and said, "Yeah." I said, "How was it?" I said, well, he was fun. oh, he's so nice, he's fine. I said, oh, good. And they went, what do you mean? I said, well, no one in Philly. I said, but, um, yeah, he Michael drinks. <laughs> and um, I said, you know, he gets a little out of hand sometimes, but he's really got it under control now. I understand he got help. And uh, so that's great that he was, he was fun. They go, really? He was so nice, you know. <laughs> I don't think I ever told him the truth. <laughs> uh, he was the most sober guy in the world. So Michael and I, I was over at his house one time, we were having coffee, and I went, oh, by the way, guess what I did to you in Florida? <laughs> to his credit, he thought it was funny. I don't know, maybe he's suing me, you know, later, but... Thanks again for doing uh, Perfect Perfect Evening. Evening. It's lovely. Yeah. Thanks again for wasting another perfectly good 13 minutes watching this show. <laughs> and uh, stay tuned after the credits to see uh, Bruce Graham's Hidden Talent. Yeah. Boy, is it hidden. Falcon or Citizen King? 68. 68 was Oliver. The musical? The musical, which I like. Carol Reed directed it. I actually liked it. It's dark. <laughs> Come on. Now, Oliver Reed, his nephew, is really scary. Is Bill Sykes. 58. 58 was uh, 56, 57, 58, 58. Uh, I always get this confused with Around the World Maybe Day. Gigi. Yeah. 62. 62 was Lawrence of Arabia. It was also the year of To Kill a Mockingbird. So how do you, you know, you got to flip a coin on that one. <laughs> Is this useless or what? That's uh, pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty wow. useless. <laughs> I don't destroy students. Um, I'll write a few.